Welcome to the Peachtree Podcast. Peachtree Learning Center is a nonprofit in Middle Tennessee dedicated to training and discipling students in all the fine arts to become excellent and skilled in order to spread the kingdom of God into the world of the arts. On this podcast, we will discuss topics designed to encourage, uplift, educate, and equip people to proclaim the kingdom more deeply in their own families and communities. Welcome back to Peachtree's podcast. We are sitting here on the cusp of a brand new school year for the first time ever in our history with two buildings to care for and two buildings to use in that purpose and are super excited about what all that means and what all that's going to bring to us. It's been a quick season of turnaround. Uh, Two months ago, this was not on our radar and suddenly we have a second campus to outfit with classes and lessons and lots of beautiful children coming through the doors to learn and be encouraged. And we're kind of in awe and humbled by all that God has done to make this happen. Um, he's brought us new teachers. He's literally brought people into our community that w- that we didn't know anything about who are perfect for what we're doing and are coming alongside with enthusiasm and excitement. And we're thrilled about all the new events we're going to get to hold in our space and um, have been busy building um, building out what that looks like in our minds and then... Um, we're going to be excited to watch God bring to fruition the parts of that that He deems are worthwhile and um, and brings provision for. So we are in a, a whole new a whole new gear here, and it's been a, a very exciting summer. And um, we're very excited about the new year and what all it's going to bring. Um, and while I've been thinking about that, uh, I've heard a lot of people talk about summertime and how quickly it's gone by, which is always something you hear. At the 1st of August, um, parents lament that summer's over, or parents are excited that summer's over. Um, A lot of people thrive on the structure of the school year, and that's a reality, but other people really enjoy the uh, unmooring that happens in the summer, that you get to take a break from all the the things, all the commitments and the strict meal times, and and that's also real. But wherever you land, um, there's a thought you should have uh, on your radar, uh, a thought that Someone gave me when I was a young mom, and I threw it out as total garbage at the time. Uh, A lady looked at me and said, the days are long, but the years are short. And that just sort of slapped me upside the head, because at the time, the days were very long. And I did not see years as short. I saw years as 365 of those really long days stretched together, and it seemed endless. And I was very tired. Um, But then I put my head down and did bath time and did story time and... um, disciplined my children and loved my children and blew bubbles and tucked them in and I looked up and years had gone by and suddenly I wasn't needed to tuck them in the same way and they didn't need me to do their bath and then you put your head down again and you look up and you have children who are driving and children who are going out on their own and doing things without you and then you put your head down again and you look up and they're grown and they're getting married and now I have a child expecting her own child and I look around and think wow those years were really short um and so I, I know that's a hard concept, especially if you're at the front end of your parenting journey. But um, I also remember specifically as a homeschool mom, remembering the feeling of having difficulty starting the school year because it just seemed so large looming at the end of summer and um, wondering how in the world we would ever get through all the things I had bought for them to do. And I would pray desperately that my children would get excited about it too, because I would get excited and then also daunted. Um, it seemed really hard to start every new year. And I would worry and fret about how we'd all fit fit it all in in just 180 days of teaching. Um, but then there's that feeling of looking up in March at the close to the end of your school year and um, wondering where in the world the seven months just went or the eight months just went, depending on when you start your school year. And um, and the other phrase that I learned was that time is a thief. And we're told this in Genesis. After Adam and Eve have sinned, God took them. To, uh, God tied them to the seasons when He sent them out to work the ground from which they came. Um, to get their food, time, uh, times he he tied them to that in a fresh way, and made them work for their food, and they could only do that in certain seasons of the year, um, and time became an inexorable thing. It became their enemy uh, when they were first made and put in the garden. Time was not a concept they had to worry about. They were carefree, and they didn't have to work, and they didn't have to worry about what season it was. There was always food prepared and food available. And suddenly they're tied to time in a new way. And we still are to this day tied to that time. We're tied to the seasons. We're tied to the days. And time is inexorable. It does not slow down for anything. It does not speed up for anything. It marches at the same pace for everyone on the planet. And there's nothing we can do about it. However, we are told we can do something about it. 
we can make it worth something. We can redeem the time. Now, redeeming something may, means giving it value that it didn't have before. When I was young, there was a store chain that gave out little green stamps, and my sister and I used to organize them like stickers if my mom didn't watch out. Collecting the little green stamps into booklets let shoppers go to a special store to get things and exchange them for the full booklets. There were household items and decor, and it was fun to shop knowing that all you needed was these green stamps, and you didn't have to have money. This is a great example of redemption. Those green stamps were worth nothing. They were simply colored paper that, colored paper that was sticky on the back. But putting them in a proper booklet in an orderly way, they became currency in the right store. And this is what we are to do with time. It steals our lives and makes us anxious and tries, tries to rob us of the big picture by bogging us down in the details and things that won't outlive us. But we are to redeem the time and give it value by investing in things that last longer than we do. How do we do that? Ephesians 5, 15 and 16 says we're to walk carefully, making the best use of our time. And Paul says this is how wise men walk. They look to the end and they determine their course for today. Galatians 6, 9 and 10 says, For the one who sows to his flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. In other words, everything he has will be corrupted. And that's a function of time. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. Think about that. That is how we beat the curse of time. We end up living eternally. We get to look down and stick our tongues out at time at some point when we're finished here on earth. And ver the rest of that verse goes on to say, Let us not grow weary in doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, especially to those who are of the household of faith. And I would say the household of faith starts with your household. Do not grow weary. This wording implies there's a choice. You can choose to grow weary, but just don't, especially when you're doing good to those of the household of faith. Those in faith with you deserve your unweariness. So I would encourage you today to redeem the time, to stand up and say, I will not grow weary in doing good, especially to my household who's in faith with me. I will stand up and I will give them my unweary time, and I will make the most of my time because the days are evil. We hope this gives you thought to... Uh, use today and good luck starting your school year with your family. Thank you so much for joining us today. To support this podcast, please go follow us on your podcast platform of choice. And if you're interested in knowing more about the work of Peachtree, please go visit our website at peachtreelearningcenter.com for more information.